nothing to add to what has been given by the experts. But I just want to add one concern, which is back to me. First of all, where can a Ugandan who wants to learn about the culture of Uganda get the books? Where do I get the literature? Where would our students, we are talking about the love for your culture. Where do I get it? I think this is one challenge for the government, for parliament, for all these agencies who are trying to help us. All these things we are talking about are good. But unless we make it a reality, it's useless. I happen to have been a member of Pan-African Parliament. And when you talk of Africa is characterized by violence and whatnot, I had the courage of asking a stupid question one day in Parliament. I asked, where did this culture of violence start from? I want to know the origin. And if you ask yourself, you are an African, where did we inherit this culture of violence, killing each other, killing your brother, to take over the power? Where did we get it? We inherited it from the colonial masters. The brutality that they used to take over Africa, to balkanize Africa, is what probably has made us to copy. Because I've, I've, I've tried to read bits and pieces about Africa. I've not found where Africa was so bloody. And if it was, nobody would have wanted to come here anyway. So I think that's one challenge we need to uh, focus on. All these things are good. And I want to ask the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Culture. For us to change, I need to look at your curriculum. What are we teaching our children? Because that's where it starts from. Inculcation of the love of my culture. I must inculcate it in a child so that it grows with it. You cannot blame anyone to have a mother who is a, a lango like me, a father who is a lango like my Mr. Smart, but the children are speaking English. You can't blame us. Because the colonial master has taught us that if you speak English, you are above those who speak local languages. That's how we, uh, we were rating ourselves socially. So, um, moderator, I just want to leave you with one message. I want to find out maybe from Professor Lumumba, who inspired Kwame Nkrumah to feel the pain of Africa. Who inspired him? I just want to learn from you because I'm also a student of political science. Who inspired these people? Who inspired who, the people we call the founders of the, 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 of the African continent? Who inspired them? I think we need to find out. And we could take off from there so that we could learn from them and probably make our society better. But uh, for me, I'm very happy that today I've seen the Banyoro gathered here. Every time when I, when I stand in parliament, abuse them, I say, you Banyoro and Baganda, you're all stupid because you do not know that until Kabulega and uh, Kabaka Mwanga and Chief Awich and uh, the Lango commander, Winyakulu, we are disloyed from my own district. There was no Uganda. So Tokolo is the best place of the nation to call Uganda. <laughs> and if it had not been Kabulega and Mwanga, Chief Awich and Winyakulu, there would have been no United Uganda. And nobody wants to talk about it. Even Banyora are quiet, the Baganda are quiet, the Chuli are quiet. I'm the only helpless now trying to talk. <laughs> to get people to understand, I've asked some of these Baganda, what does Kololo mean? They don't know. Because that's a low word. And it's Chief of Witu named Kololo Kololo. I've asked this Baganda, 
what, what does Naguru mean? They don't know. Because there's a new word by Chief Awit, who was tormented by the colonial masters because of his hardness to defend the rights of the people. You could not have slave trade in the north. You could not have any nonsense when the Banyoro and the Baganda's king were in Tokolo. They were being defended by the Lengi and the Churi. The Baganda were not there. The Banyoro were not there. So let us talk about our history. When you talk about nationalism, where did it come from? Who inspired Kabulega to become a national? Who inspired him? Who inspired Kabaka, Kabaka Mwanga, for example? These two were rivals. They were fighting each other, but for the sake of the common enemy called the British colonial masters, for the sake of making Uganda a safe place for them to live in, they came together, buried their differences, and fought up to the last. This is a very rich history that no Ugandan would want to forget. And you intellectuals, you talk about the good things, good English, you forget these ugly, word, ugly words. They're very okay. important for us. For me, that's what I want to read. Okay. So I want to challenge the leaders who are here. In fact, it's good for you, it's good for me also to share this with you. I have been struggling to have Kabulega celebrated in Parliament by having a motion moved in Parliament before all this thing came to be. Except that being such a high profile thing, I had to consult here, consult there. Now consultation has gone in from weeks to months, but I still believe, despite what has happened, we are going to definitely have a motion and I'm glad my daughter from Hoima is here, will move a motion in Parliament to celebrate, to celebrate this great man. This is the father of Uganda. We cannot deny that. We cannot deny that. These are the people who have given us what we now are so proud of and fighting for. We are fighting for nothing. The owners of this land called Uganda are these couple leggers. We should honor them while we are still alive. I want to bless you and thank you, but I'm a proud Lango. You know where to find me. <laughs> Rokamano, uh, Rokamano, our keynote speaker, and send our greetings to our fellow Baluo. Thank okay. you very much.